Thank you, Pippa, and uh, thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to speak to this really fascinating group of people today. Um, and I really do sincerely thank Pippa, and I know Jörn and I thank Pippa for taking the lead on this project, which I think is going to be incredibly important in the evolution of our study of electoral legitimacy and democratization. As Pippa said, she's been a very gracious host to us uh, at her home um, and uh, around the world. And um, we've been very excited to collaborate. I've actually uh, put the author's names up here, scaled to importance of the scholar. Um, and uh, we, uh, I had to increase mine a little bit so it was visible. Um, it's not just alphabetical. Uh, we have, uh, Jörn and I have been working on issues around electoral administration for some time now. Um, ever since we first met in um, Jordan in 1997, um, when I was a uh, closet Scandinavian at the time, uh, and was taken down to look at the Jordanian election system, and Jörn and I have been wonderful friends and collaborators ever since, so this is exciting uh, to be presenting this material now almost 15, 16 years on. Um, very briefly, what I've been asked to do is just introduce some of the nascent uh, beginnings of these ideas of the Expert Perception Index project that um, then Fran and, and Rich are going to speak to in more detail and describe the early stages of the project. We'll just mention uh, over one slide why elections matter. If there's any preaching to the choir, this is the, uh, the preaching element. Um, if there's one room in the world right now where I don't think we have to make the case that elections matter, hopefully it's this room. I also want to briefly mention and expand a little bit upon uh, Pippa's points about the concepts of electoral integrity and what may be packed within that box, and then begin to think about where measurement ideas can be best used and how people have measured these um, issues in the past. Obviously, in established democracies in um, the developed world, we see elections as uh, the sine qua non of the choosing of governments and holding them accountable. That is taken as read. But I think that for those of us who are very interested in the developing world, in new democracies, in emerging states, we can see that elections aren't just about choosing governments and holding them accountable and choosing oppositions. But elections themselves can be an important moment in changing the dynamics of that society. There's a window for, a, for change when an election is held. That window may not be taken for good, but nevertheless it is an opportunity to move politics from authoritarianism to something different. Clearly elections can be an important component part of moving forward a peace process. They are often parts of peace process documents. And once they're held, they begin to show a census of who should be the legitimate leaders of that society. Peace processes are often driven by powerful leaders who may be paramilitaries, who may be military figures, who may be authoritarian figures, but they're not necessarily people who have ever been tested in the arena of um, popularity, electoral popularity. So that then can legitimize the leadership um, of a new democracy, of a new state, but that also gives a cathartic moment to the voters, not just the leaders. And I think for many of us, Everybody here, I'm sure, has been around the world watching elections. My mm, probably most um, uh, vibrant, vivid moment is in 1994, in the middle of the South African elections, watching people um, vote for the first time, almost in all cases, um, because of the groups that I was associated with and non-whites had not been allowed to vote before. Many white South Africans I worked with had refused to vote before, and so cathartically they were having an act of validity as a person, a human right of choosing marking that cross on the ballot. And I think that we tend to forget the cathartic emotional empowerment of voting just in itself, which while South Africa has not transformed as though many would have hoped over the last 15 years, 16 years, at the same time there has been a dramatic change since apartheid. Um, clearly, you don't get democracy with re without repeated electoral moments, and I think we won't pursue this now, but we can make a strong argument that you don't get enduring longer term stability in a state without some form of democracy. But all of that in itself is dependent upon legitimate elections. And so that is why we feel that focusing on getting a good indicator and measurement and comparative assessment of what makes a legitimate free and fair quality election is key. 
And it's even more key because the history of evaluation of elections has not been good. Let me put up a couple of quotes from uh, observation evaluations of elections, for example, in Zimbabwe in 2002, where the OAU said they were transparent, credible, free, and fair. The Namibian delegation said they were watertight, without room for rigging. I was trying to find a, um, a South African election commission quote from one of these elections, but sadly, I look at Jörn, not that he's responsible, um, but sadly I couldn't find one. But the South Africans also have validated Zimbabwean elections when clearly there were many deep problems with those elections. So how do we move beyond a political judgment that nation states and international organizations merely use to ratify an election for not issues of understanding the quality of the election, but for political reasons. I think developing a good method, a good tool, is key. Developing a method, obviously, like any discipline, rests upon many people's work and the scholarly work coming before. I put up some pictures here of the foundational scholarly work um, of people who are assessing the quality and the freeness and the fairness of elections. Now, I'm sure there are some people missing, and there are many people in this room who um, are on this figure. But even if we begin, I put Jörn Elklit at the center of all things. He is at the center here, and I think his work on election administration really is key to this entire field. And obviously, Pippa's work in a whole related amount of fields has been crucial. I think Bob Pasta also originally has worked and given us a lot of good ideas way back to the 1990s on the quality of elections. As we go around, Pali Svensson, another Dane working with Jörn Elklid, and Judith Kelly, another Dane working not with Jörn but from the Danish tradition on the quality of elections. Um, Jerry Munk, uh, and Sarah Birch, who is with us here. And then Chad Vickery and Erica Shane, who've worked uh, at IFIS on these issues of electoral quality. It's very important, I think, the work of Susan Hyde, of Andreas Schredler, uh, Eric Bjornland, and Stefan Lindbergh. You can see this strong Scandinavian element within uh, the foundational work. I couldn't actually find a picture of me recently, so I got one from last year, um, as you can see. Uh, the core concepts of electoral integrity, um, as Pippa has outlined, need to rest upon some broadly comparative foundations. So one thing that the election perception index needs to do is have universality, have the ability that it can be applied from any nation state to any nation state and even back in time. Some of the earlier work that Jörn and I did on this issue attempted to evaluate elections using our method way back into the 19th century to see how they would compare to modern day elections. We need that ability not just to look at new democracies but older democracies as well. Um, and I think that validates the comparison um, between new democracies when we're trying to see how they should be evolving over time. Clearly, election mechanisms in Europe and Western Europe were not perfect in the 19th and 20th centuries. They develop over time. We shouldn't expect new democracies, African, Latin American, Asian, Central Asian, South Pacific democracies to be perfectly pristine overnight. We also do need to rest upon international principles on values and standards. Craig Jeunesse, who's pictured here from the UN's Electoral Assistance Department, has been working very hard on trying to implement some of those. And it's not just about flaws, manipulations, uh, malfeasance within elections. It's all about administrative efficiency as well. There may not be deliberate attempts to steal elections, but the elections can still be flawed and failed because of the inability of the election commission or the election officers to run the elections in a way that delivers a transparent vote. And that, we think, is as important sometimes as fraud in itself, and thus it needs to be part of this. As Pippa mentioned, you need to look at the holistic electoral cycle and the um, slide that was shown earlier demonstrates that, moving not just on the election day, but moving through the earlier legal issues, through issues of presentation, of polling, of campaigning, of finance, um, and then in the post-election period of ratifying the results and post-election complaints mechanisms as well. And in the past, the elements that have been looked at um, have covered a wide variety of approaches. And I know Sarah is going to talk about 
the um, normative good of mixed method approaches on this panel after myself. We've had a number of studies that have looked at observation mission reports, Udick Kelly not least, um, and some studies that looked at media reports of election quality as well. Sometimes you have to look at human rights reports, which are broader than just election observation reports. And then there's an increasing trend of very good field experiments, forensics, understanding fraud in election issues, and then case studies about changes over time in election mechanisms. And finally, we can look at opinion surveys to understand how people and elites actually do view the quality of elections. For this project and the project that's being introduced here over these next two days, we're primarily beginning with a focus on expert evaluations, and that will be explained in more detail. But both domestic and international experts evaluating to a series of consistent questions the quality of elections in that holistic sense of all the elements. That will also then be based upon the foundations of legal framework evidence of the election results themselves and sort of understanding the forensics of the election results, anchoring vignettes from the experts to understand how they view themselves quality of elections so they're all on the same page, and then bolstering that with opinion surveys that speak directly to citizens' evaluations of the quality of elections. And so you will see in the documentation that um, Pippa and the team have developed along with Jörn and myself's um, advice, a series of questions that can be put to the electoral experts. And what the pilot studies are already showing, not to prejudge the presentations, is that this takes us a long way forward in understanding some of the quality issues and comparing cases to cases. And there's obviously more information on the website there. So with that, I shall finish. Thank you so much, Andy.